Tonight's show is brought to you by... It's me, it's me, it's Vinny V, coming to you live from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And I gotta say, it's getting a little eerie around here. <laughs> I just drove down the strip. It's freaking deserted, baby. I went to every sports book in town. Caesars Palace, the MGM, the Venetian, hell, even Planet Hollywood. Everybody's all shuttered up. And you don't need a premier prognosticator like myself to tell you why. <laughs> Basketball's on timeout. Hockey, it's on ice. The Olympics? Hey, not this year. Hell, last week, Vince McMahon shot WrestleMania in his garage with a friggin' camcorder. <laughs> it seems like everybody's just sitting on the sidelines, counting their days till this all blows over. Hey, everybody but me, baby. <laughs> That's right. I'm sitting inside my penthouse suite, and I'm counting a stack of Kermodos. <laughs> That's big money, baby. <laughs> Let's just forget. I'm not just any old guru. I'm the man who knows all. <laughs> if you're a sophisticated gambler, like I know you are, it always pays to have a friend like me, because I search far and wide, and I found the action that you so desperately need. So call me now at 1-900-V-4-Vegas and get my Stone Cold Locks from Mario Kart Tournaments on Twitch. Online poker games, Russian water polo, Nepalese elephant polo, North Korean monkey polo, and fist fights in the goddamn toilet paper aisle at Safeway. <laughs> if you can bet on it, I can bake on it. So, so pick up that phone and put it to work. You know, unless you got any any better plans, you friggin' marks. Hello and welcome to the War on Morons, where we speak truth to stupidity. I'm Anissa. And I'm Jay. And we are on week three of a nationwide shutdown due to coronavirus. Do you know where your toilet paper is? Yeah, I bet you didn't think this would be what the apocalypse would look like, right? I know I didn't. Yeah, one thing I do know is there's never been more morons in the headlines. Thank God. Now, before we get to tonight's stories and our week's special guest, Russell, from as far as I can tell... We want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you like our show, make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing for free on Podbean at thewaronmorons.podbean.com. Yep, new episodes come out every Monday night on pretty much every platform you can think of. But subscribers get early access. So each week you get this, uh, the show sometimes as early as three days before we officially drop it. So if you can't wait to get your fix, make sure you subscribe. You definitely won't want to miss next week's episode where Bin Hameen from The Conspiracy Horseman, The Friday Night Locker Room, and other shows on the Hameen Media Group will be joining us. And if you want to be on the show, give us a call. Our call-in line is always open at 813-906-9099. Yep, if you catch us live, we'll bring you on air, but if not, you can always leave us a voicemail. In fact... Um, you know, we love listening to our listeners, and we got a few voicemails this week. Awesome. We'll play those later on tonight. But... Yeah, they're worth the wait. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's get to our first block of stories. For our first story of the night, a Vancouver, Washington woman named Miley became the laughing stock of Reddit when she revealed that she had been washing her hands for the past few days with not soap, but rather a block of cheddar cheese. Okay, was it antibacterial uh, cheddar cheese? Uh, no word on whether the cheddar cheese had <laughs> antibacterial properties. <laughs> Apparently, the woman left the cheese out on accident and forgot about it, only to pick it back up thinking it was antibacterial soap. Okay, yeah, I, I don't think that's going to defend against the virus. Yeah, pretty sure Tillamook won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder... How long does it really take a person to realize that their soap isn't creating soap suds? Yeah, but is it creating nacho sauce? What? Oh, I could have told her that's nacho soap. Oh, yeah. my God. Nacho, nacho <laughs> soap. Oh, come on. All right. Moving on. Moving on. In California, the city of Reading has had to ask its residents to please stop using T-shirts as toilet paper. 
The shredded t-shirts were apparently being used in lieu of toilet paper due to the apparent shortage caused by corona panic and actually wound up causing a sewage backup that the city had to deal with. Yeah, no shit. I mean, <laughs> the t-shirts, they didn't have anything else that they could use before they started like raiding their closet. I mean, how have they already resorted to this? We're only two weeks into this thing. Yeah, I thought they had stockpiles of the stuff. What was their plan when they ran out of t-shirts? You know, I don't even think these people have run out of toilet paper. I think they're hoarding it. I think they're using it as currency, and the t-shirts are worth less than their frickin' rolls of Charmin. Conspiracy. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, moving on. I think we don't have to explain why that's a bad idea. So, was everyone panic buying emergency supplies like hand sanitizer, water, toilet paper, and food... This time really shows you what's important to people. And for one Kentucky couple, that meant attempting to buy 23 cases of Mountain Dew. 23 freaking cases of Mountain Dew? Oh, that's 552 cans, in case you were wondering. Yeah, actually, I was going to ask you to do the math. (laughs) Who the hell needs that much? How many Mountain Dews can can you drink? Oh, I I think in Kentucky that's like a two-week supply. (laughs) Yeah, in some parts of Kentucky, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Basically. So, anyways, when the couple was denied their major purchase, they wound up raging at the cashier about it. Oh, oh, no, I saw this video. They were like like 400 pounds each, right? Yeah, obviously. Well, probably all the Mountain Dew, but they freaked the hell out. It was awesome. Like, never get between a hillbilly and their Mountain Dew. Hey, I, I could live by that motto for sure. Yeah, at least we know where their stimulus check's going. <laughs> They're going to buy, like, a, a two-month supply of Mountain Dew. <laughs> better watch out. That Mountain Dew delivery driver better be on the job. <laughs> hey, our call-in line's ringing. 619. Awesome. Let's pick it up and see what's going on. All right, caller. Um, state your name and where you're calling from. Hey, this is Jenna from Oceanside. Oceanside. Okay, what, what, Oceanside, what part of the country are you in? California, duh. Okay. Um, California. I was calling so um, I can help heal the nation. That's a pretty lofty goal. Um, how, how do you plan on healing us all? Like, Trump has really created a nationwide panic, and his racial uh, discrimination is really outrageous. He's calling the coronavirus the Chinese virus. Well, I mean, it, it, it comes from China. China. Okay, I'll ignore that. Um, but what's the campaign again? Is it like a, a nonprofit or something? It's my Hunt Across America campaign. And I think like the best way to explain it would be to explain exactly how I got started. So a couple of weeks ago, I got some new neighbors across the street. And like, they're such a nice family. And they happen to be Chinese. And... I didn't want them to feel out of place or unwelcome in today's horrifying racial climate. <laughs> okay, so, so I, where's this going? I, I went over to their house as soon as they moved in and knocked on the door. And as soon as they opened it up, I gave them, like, the biggest hugs. And I was like, welcome, y'all. Don't even worry about anything. Like, we're so happy to have you. Okay, like, well, hold on. Je- Jenna, like, my, my brain hurts a little bit here. So you're going around hugging people? Of course. Okay, we now, need to know that we're coming together stronger than ever, and we accept each other. I don't understand. A, a lot of my neighbors have been kind of weird about it, and I think it's because of Trump. No, it's and not because of Trump. Like, it's because of the damn coronavirus. Like, have you... Uh, maybe uh, maybe you don't watch the news, but um, I'm, like the entire world is doing this thing called social distancing now, where you're supposed to be like six feet away from everybody and like not leaving your house, and and sure as hell not supposed to be touching people. Like you're you could be going around spreading the coronavirus to everybody. That's ridiculous. I'm young and healthy. There's nothing wrong with me. All I'm trying to do is help people come together in this time of uncertainty. Well, I mean, (laughs) it's getting a little less uncertain out there. (laughs) Like, everybody across America should seriously start their own Hugs Across America campaign so we can all let each other know that we accept each other and we love each other. 
All right, Joe. Thanks for calling. Um, if you're listening and you are in California, I encourage you to uh, go out and hug a neighbor as tightly as possible. That's right. Thank you. She sounded completely clueless. Uh, yeah, well, she sounded like she stepped off the set of Clueless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you think that that guest was putting her neighbors in danger, get this story. A hatchet-wielding man allegedly robbed a Portland donut shop early Saturday morning, only to be nabbed by police a block away, eating the same donuts he stole before fleeing on foot. Hey, we've all been there. I mean, haven't you just really, really wanted a donut? Not that bad. And, and all you have is, like, a blunt weapon of some kind? Come on. And they won't give you a free donut? So, I mean, what else is he supposed to do? Well... I can't recommend his course of action to anyone. (laughs) Police responded at about 3.42 a.m. to reports of a man who was clearly high, um, who entered a donut shop with a hatchet. He allegedly hopped on the counter and filled a pink box with donuts. So he, like, helped himself to the packaging, like, filled up a dozen. Um, Then he fled on foot, but he left his hatchet behind in the store. Yeah, that's how I know he was high. Right? Uh, it's like it's like he was in like an RPG or something. <laughs> and he only could carry a certain amount of items at once. So he's like, point. all right, I'm going to put down the hatchet. I don't need it anymore. I've acquired my donuts. Time to, time to you know, wolf <laughs> down the school. <laughs> Yikes. Well, um, normally, I mean, I have to say, I would think it'd be the cops stealing the donuts, to be honest. Yeah, you know they confiscated them. Ah, uh, there it is. That makes sense. Well... <laughs> Speaking of unnecessary weaponry, one man told the wrong neighbor to turn his music down when he knocked on Benjamin Leyland's door. The 47-year-old reportedly became upset and grabbed a two-and-a-half-foot-long sword. Oh, that's a big escalation. Yep, he then chased the man down the hall with the weapon before the victim safely made it back to their own apartment. I mean, honestly, if the L.A. Sheriff's Department thinks people buying guns is dangerous... I mean, yeah, like, didn't we have a story about swords last week? Yeah, I mean, between this, that story, the hatchet guy, I'm I'm thinking men with, like, swords is a much bigger issue than people buying guns ever will be. Yeah, I mean, what's that, the Third Amendment? Amendment? (laughs) (laughs) Look, we're Americans, we will always find a way to threaten and intimidate each other. So, yeah, sword up, guys. (laughs) <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Well, while we're on the subject of unjustified retaliations, one West Palm Beach, Florida man, hey, that's where uh, that's where I'm from, was angry that his relative would not give him drug money. Well, that makes sense. So the 35-year-old druggie retaliated by sending the person pornographic images of children. Oh, okay, that doesn't make sense. No, no it doesn't. Like that is the that's probably the biggest escalation of the week. Yeah, it's pretty horrifying, to be honest. I mean, when the man was asked why he was sent the link, like, he's, like, the victim asked him, like, why would you do this? Like, why would you send me this? Apparently, the criminal responded by giggling. Like, tee-hee. tee That goes with the child pornography. Oh, man. <laughs> he wasn't giggling for his mugshot, though, as he unsurprisingly got arrested I have to say, like, not only was this morally reprehensible, it was also incredibly stupid. If you want drug money that badly, there's lots of ways to get it that are way less disgusting. I mean, you could steal copper wiring, you could sell plasma, you could steal a car. I you mean, could act in pornography of your own. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and now for another Florida man story that proves that the streets of Florida are definitely not safe. This story started outside of a Howard Johnson Inn. As, like, half of these stories do. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Where Fort Myers police responded to a report of a suspicious car. Now, Joshua Sanders, who was driving the white Acura, backed up, nearly hitting the two officers, and took off. Now, a Lee County deputy saw Sanders speeding with a flat tire that was sending smoke into the air. Okay, so wait, wait. He was speeding... With a flat tire running from the cops. Absolutely. He was driving in the wrong direction on oh, street. Oh, hold on. He, it's getting better. It's getting so way it, better. So it starts off, he's speeding, running away from the cops with a flat tire. And now you're telling me he's running in the wrong direction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he made the brilliant move to jump onto I-75 northbound. All right. That was wise. So <laughs> as deputies were chasing him, 
He started throwing things out his window. Like turtle shells. Oh, much worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> this was not Mario Kart, but he apparently thought it was. He threw out plastic bags, his seat headrest, and his prosthetic leg. Wait. Okay, now this is just in, this might be my favorite story of the week. So <laughs> let's back it up again. So one legged man, one legged man, running from the cops, running from the cops, jumps into a car with a flat tire. Absolutely, drives the wrong way. Yep, onto the freeway. There you go. Throwing shit out of his window. And then he ended his high speed chase by intentionally slamming into an unmarked deputy's vehicle. He definitely got five of those stars, right? Oh, yeah, that's a five star Uber ride, for <laughs> sure. I'd say more like five Grand Theft Auto stars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I think that was a really good time, speaking of a lot of craziness, to play those voicemails that came into the War on War on Spotlight. Oh, yeah, if you think that it can't get any crazier, buckle up. <laughs> buckle up, because we have some voicemails from our listeners, and we're so excited to play them for you, so let's kick it off. First message. COVID-19, it came in the spring of 2020. It brought with the death, and now I can see there's nothing but death for me. Um, was that a threat? I mean, it was a, it was a song. What, like, what's it with listeners always thinking that this is some kind of karaoke show? Yikes. Okay, well, thanks for calling in, um, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> All right, let's play another one. Second message. Now what in tarnation? I was just asking you folks if you know how people's gonna get some toilet papers nowadays. I ain't got no toilet papers in the house to go to the store. Ain't no toilet paper on the shelves. What's I'm to do? Them tell me I get a, a boo day and spray my butt. I ain't no gay. I know what to do, no boo day. What we gonna do? All right, all right, I don't really know if that one was supposed to go to us. Uh, I think that somebody needs to get that woman some t-shirts. I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, get, get, get grandma some t-shirts. Yep. Um, anyway, we got one more. This, oh boy. This one's a doozy. Um, I, here, I'm just gonna play it. All right. Third message. All right, this is Saul Berkowitz, and I'm calling. I've got a Q drop from about 10 days ago. I've also got warts all over my ass, but that's a separate story. So Q is organizing the Wu-Tang Clan to make a custom gay wedding cake for Trump and Jared Kushner. After they have consummated this incestual gay relationship, Elton John is going to play a piano solo while Ellen DeGeneres dances a boogaloo. After that, the Ravens will swoop in and pack every unwed corona victim's eyeballs out and replace them with Cadbury eggs. Finally, Trump will announce that he is the king of Israel. David Goldberg will come back from the dead. David Bowie will appear in the sky as a holograph, polishing Kobe's knob. And Jerry Garcia will show himself on the capstone of the Great Pyramid. But wait, it's not over. The Pope will come out and explain that he is actually Q, and that he's been working this whole time to dismantle the Jesuits and the Vatican from the inside. He will show us all tapes of all his cronies harvesting adrenochrome, and he will disclose that he was just participating in order to get us inside evidence. Then we will all be forced to watch the Beavison Butthead movie until the Ministry of Information comes in for the mind wipe. Now, since this, I've heard there's some different things in the pipeline, but just everybody stay tuned. <laughs> what was that? Um, apparently the QAnon people are listening now. The who? Well, you know, the, the Q, like, it, it's a it's a whole thing. Like, they know about the secret pedophiles and their... I, I, you, you gotta go on 4chan. Oh, my yeah. God. That was the craziest thing I've ever heard. I can't believe you got any of that. Well, I mean, it's, it's a big conspiracy. You gotta kind of be, you know, connected to... Well, speaking of conspiracies, speaking of being connected, this is actually a perfect time to bring on our guest. 
Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a special guest on tonight's show, and we're excited to bring him on. Uh, joining us all the way from Washington State is the host of, as far as I can tell on YouTube, Russell Babbitt. Yes, Russell knows all about conspiracies. I think he knows a little bit about Q, too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can clear some things up for us. Russell, thanks for joining us today and being our guest on the show. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, we're excited to have you on. Now, to kick things off before we get into any stories, we have a question we like to ask all of the guests on the War on Moron. So, who is your favorite moron? Who is my favorite moron? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Let me see. Let's do this. Giorgio Sukalos, the guy from Ancient Aliens. Oh, oh, that's a really good one. That is actually yeah. a great one. Nobody's yeah. brought him <laughs> up yet. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, he's just a, he's a fantastic personality and the hair, but his, the, his whole, like, I'm going to point at aliens, but I won't say it's aliens, but it seems like aliens shit. I just, I love it. <laughs> I can't blame you. He does have a larger-than-life persona, that's for sure. Yeah, he's one of my favorite memes. <laughs> <laughs> he he is, for sure. I don't know if you just heard, we just played some voicemails that came through on our hotline over the uh, over the week. The last one, kind of up your alley, man. There's, there's somebody with a Q drop. What do you think about this whole oh, QAnon stuff? Well, you know, me personally... I don't trust it, but being privy to some of the conversations and some of the backroom inside baseball that I am, because I'm from Redmond, Washington. I grew up down the street from Microsoft. I know a lot of people that work for Bill Gates from hell, and so I get some of the some of the wire on this stuff. People will just send it to me, and I read it, and I got to tell you, man, it's way far out, but we get, we got to keep it on the table because who even knows what the fuck is going on right now? I would like to believe that it's true. Some of it is, but the shit I'm hearing is so far out that I just, all I can do is entertain it, but I try to share it with everyone because it's fucking hilarious. But, you know, if, if you heard from, Saul Berkowitz, is that because he told me he's a fan of the show? Yeah, does he listen to your show too? Yeah, he does. He does. He, you know, he's a he's a good guy. He's t telling us what he knows or what he can. But I have I have a Q drop. This is from three twenty eight twenty to just earlier this morning. All right, hit it. We okay. The Knights of Malta are in a secret meeting at Un Umbrella Corp discussing the rollout of the new COVID vaccine. This will be delivered without any toxins and will clear the human mind and body of nanoparticulates and toxins. The sheep must not know that the vaccine are actually meant to clear their mind of brainwashing. When they receive the vaccines, they will be able to see that 9-11 was an inside job within 33 hours. The WHO is going to meet at 9-11 a.m., and they will be rounded up to have their genitals scanned for traces of reptilian fecal matter. All who are found, all who are found to have bungled a snake person will be tried for treason and hung by the neck until dead. After this, the Center for Disease Creation will be shut down, and essential oils will replace allopathic medicine. Young living reps in each town across our country will hold free classes on how to cleanse yourself of negative spiritual implants and archontic energy by using Pleiadian anal beads and transdimensional sexual meditation. Q, who is actually a combination of Jesus, an AI time, ta time traveler, and Rupert Murdoch, is preparing the so-called FEMA camps to welcome every single anon and is waiting to give them personal awards for trusting the plan. Don't let those who doubt the plan scare you. Jesus and the Blue Avians will use a hyperspace tuning fork to sift out the hearts of those who doubted that a Jesuit-educated, close personal friend of Jeffrey Epstein could drain the swamp and round up all the pedos. Where we go one, we go all. Trust the plan. 
Wow. I don't even know where to go with that one, buddy. <laughs> Neither do I. I mean, we just have to take their word for it, I guess, because it's, there's no, I mean, we could, we can debunk it, but it's so outrageous that it's like, I don't know, man. It just, it begs the question, could this be true? It's so I don't fake, think, it must be real. Exactly. <laughs> Exact, exactly, man. Elon got me with that. It got to me, absorbed into my consciousness to now I, where I see something that fake, I'm like, this has got to be real. <laughs> I don't even know if we should go to our stories after that. I mean, what's going to top the Blue Avians and right? the Clintons and the Underground Moon Base? <laughs> Dude, I think we should check out the stories. I mean, what's going on in the world? All right. Well, we got some good stuff in the war, uh, the world of the moron. Yeah, we sure do. Uh, with everybody social distancing, we thought some good old fashioned travel stories might make everyone glad they have to stay home. So, on a Brussels Airlines flight, a passenger was screaming and spitting at a flight attendant, so she hit him. Not to be outdone, the passenger slapped her straight across the face. Apparently, Brussels Airlines doesn't have air marshals on their flights, but I take it the drinks are free. Free and copious. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of exciting flights, cheap fares are luring travelers to fly, even despite the coronavirus pandemic. So while most people are staying home, avoiding the outside world and all the people in it, others are living their best recycled cabin air lives and traveling for a discount. They're unafraid of the coronavirus, saying YOLO, and hopping on a plane to visit family, friends, and see the sites they otherwise would spend big bucks to see. And in case anybody was wondering, no, they are not wearing hazmat suits to do it. Yeah, you can get a flight for like 20 bucks now, right? Who the hell is letting people visit them <laughs> in this time? Like, if somebody just got off the plane, I'd be like, uh, stay the hell away from me. Like, no, thank you. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just not really afraid of it other than it could totally kill you if it was, I mean, it's, it's some weaponized crazy shit. I don't know if it's 5G combined with a really bad flu or if it is like a bioweapon and 5G, but I don't, I try to just not be afraid of it because I don't think viruses spread the way that they describe them. I don't, I don't know if you guys have been listening to Crow Triple Seven radio, but it's, I don't know. It's fucking, it's unclear on how viruses That's even work. Like work is, it's spending a thousand dollars on an airplane ticket. So this is how you get the risk here, right? I don't know. I think planes are gross, to be honest. Like, even without the coronavirus stuff, like, I feel like I always get sick after flying on a plane. And so I feel like this is, like, even more of an excuse for me not to fly. Like, I just wouldn't do it. Yeah, I don't like flying, period. I just think it's fucking shitty. Yeah. What they make you, like, just, I don't know. I just don't trust them. Like, they, once you get on a plane, it's basically like you're, like, in jail. They, they've got you. You, like, they're like, all right, motherfucker. You're on the plane now, so if we want to crash it, we totally can. And I'm like, you guys are savages. I know they crash planes to kill people all the time. Yeah. I'm with <laughs> you. Like I don't sure. like it at all. You can't exactly open a window and jump out, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, That's oh, their old a call coming in, actually, on our hotline. 561 area code. Oh, That's that West Palm? That's West Palm, all right. All right. Let's pick it up. Awesome. Hi, caller. You're on the air. Why don't you tell us your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, can you hear me calling? Yeah, I can hear you. Who's this? Elroy Brown of One Love, Caribbean Restaurant, 5500 Blue Heron, Riviera Beach. Come on down. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, I don't, I, are you even still open with everything that's going on right now? No, no, no. What's here? I want to call your show. You're talking about all these people flying on the airplanes, having a bad time. I actually just got down here. I was up in New York City uh, for the weekend, and I just flew, flew down to Palm Beach International. I tell you, it's never been better. What? I mean, uh, why are you flying at a time like that? It's, it's never been better. Nobody on the plane. They're like three, they're like three other people on the plane. I'm stretching my legs out. I'm getting drunk. I'm feeling real good. <laughs> I didn't. I don't have to wait for the taxi man or nothing. It's a bit 
Do you get, do you get iry before you get on the plane? I, I get iry every day, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I oh, get yeah. Every day, like every day, man. What's up, bro? Big team squad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you come down. I don't, I don't know if you're in Florida. You come, or you come on down 5500 Blue Heron Avenue. It, it's in Riviera Beach. One love, Caribbean restaurant. We, we got the, we got the beef patty. We got the oxtail soup. We got the jerk chicken. It, it's flying up. There's so much business. Come on. There's so much business. What are you talking about? Why aren't you in self-quarantine right now? You're supposed to quarantine yourself for 14 days after travel. What the hell is quarantine? You're not supposed to go out and see other people. You're supposed to stay in your house. Hey, you shut your mouth. I do what I want. You know, I'm supposed to run my restaurant. I got to serve the food to the people. I got a lot of people very hungry. For some reason, nobody open around my... I'm in mean, the shopping center. Nobody open. I'm open. <laughs> But, but you're not supposed to be open. I mean, like, you're only, I mean, that's it. You're cooking food for other people, Delroy. You just bring you yeah. a like the hot spot for coronavirus. Yeah, it's, it's not a problem. You know, I'm a little bit, you know, under the weather. Um, but, uh, you know, I got to make that money. I got to serve the food. So, uh, oh. it's not a problem for me. It's not a problem. We got about 15 people in here right now. <laughs> I only call you. I only call you because I want to tell you it's okay to fly. It's really good time. Don't worry, that is disgusting. I think you're violating like every health code and like quarantine order that exists right now. No, you sound like the health inspector man trying to shut fly down. That's not going to happen. She sounds like Babylon. Oh, yeah. God. She's trying to, she try to, she try to come down for me. Oh, because I got a little bit of fever. It's not a problem. I wash my hands this morning. You're going to make everyone sick, Delroy. You're going to make every customer in your restaurant sick. Seriously. I didn't even make nobody sick when I served the rats. How are you going to make them sick when I'm serving real chicken? That was so gross. I mean, Delroy's always kind of gross. Did he say that he's serving people rats? I literally... You said you no, know, you stopped serving rats. So, okay, yeah, you so, stopped serving rats. So it's okay now, right? Yeah, he's I just sneezing and coughing at people. Oh, <laughs> well, there's nothing okay about what was going on in that restaurant. Nothing at all. Yeah, well, I was going to say, hey, man, you, you know, flights are cheap. If you want to get across country, go down to South Florida, you could actually get in there. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time any of us had a good meal, right? Yeah, they they still got the places are open for takeout here, but that's it. And they look at you like you're a fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely wouldn't recommend checking out Delroy's place, even with all that in mind. But at the end of the day, I don't know how we're ever going to top that, like, yeah. honestly. I was going to say you could order Chinese. Yeah, okay. That's <laughs> quite enough. <laughs> uh, all right, Russell. Well, I, I guess we're gonna we're gonna uh, let you go in a minute here, but I want to make sure you can get your plug in. Um, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, what you've been doing lately on the show? Okay, my YouTube channel is as far as I can tell. Just go ahead, type that into the search bar, Bing Bang Boom. And just today, I did. I'm about to publish a podcast with the great Baldini, backed by popular demand for the fourth time or so. And Baldini talks with me about flat earth, fake history, the academic mafia, and more. And oh yeah, the COVID-19 insider trading. So it's a, it's a juicy one. It's like two hours and 10 minutes. Yesterday I did the Mandela effect with Brett Sailors. So we do all types of stuff, mainly just conspiracies. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, I like the show myself. I recommend all the War on Morons listeners, if you like conspiracies. Check it out, as far as I can tell. Yeah, thank you, buddy. And then I just want to say before before I go, I do not consent because I was never asked, and fuck the morons. Fuck them <laughs> all. Let's wage a war on those fucking assholes. <laughs> We're definitely trying. <laughs> all right, brother. You have a good rest of your day. You too. Take it easy, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.
And as a reminder to our listeners, next week we have a very special guest lined up, Bin Hameen from the Conspiracy Horsemen and the other shows on Hameen Media Group will be joining us on the War on Morons as our special guest. We're really excited to have him. So if you're excited as we are, be sure you subscribe. Don't miss that episode when it drops. Yep. Remember, subscribers get access to the show a little bit early. Uh, but we're not done today. Uh, we've still got some more really, really crazy stories. So let's just get back into it. we got one last block for you. Awesome. So a South Korea church sprayed salt water into the mouths of its followers out of a belief that the salt water would kill the coronavirus. The result? 46 of their churchgoers were infected, including the pastor and his wife. Oh, well, I guess salt water is not the magical cure. Surprise, surprise. Is, is sharing the drinking receptacle the magical cure? Nope, that's the way to spread it. <laughs> Speaking of homeopathic COVID-19 cures, an MP from India has been quoted as saying, cow dung has many benefits. I think it can kill the coronavirus. Cow urine can also be useful. Hold on. Let's slow down on this one. Mm. He wants people to, what, eat cow poop and, and drink cow piss? Look, apparently, I was looking into it, this is a widely held belief in parts of India where cow dung and urine are seen as potentially having antiviral or bacterial properties. Okay, I mean, that's I'm all for, you know, different cultures and everything, but... Uh, let's just make sure that uh, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, let's not go all in on this one. Although, if you are interested, a cow dung soap company called Cowpathy has been selling alcohol-free hand sanitizer with distilled cow urine obtained from indigenous cows online since 2018. Currently out of stock, the product page says that due to high demand, they are currently limiting the purchase quantity per customer for the product so they can maximize access. So keep an eye out. I mean, if you're interested, it's yeah, out there for I, you. I think I can do without. Let's, let's keep it rolling here. <laughs> In Arizona... One man is dead and his wife is in critical care after ingesting parasite treatment for fish in an effort to protect oh, themselves. Oh, no, no. I heard about this one. I actually, let me step in on this okay, one. This okay. is hilarious. So you might have heard this in the news because um, they've been trying to, they've somehow been trying to blame this on Trump. Yeah. Um, so there's this, um, there's this chemical, it's called chloroquine mm -hmm. and it's used in malaria treatments. So right. it's like an anti-malaria cure. But you know, it has to be used in a certain way. You know, it's usually as part well, of a pill. It's a chemical compound. So the compound that they use to treat malaria is hydroxychloroquine. Right. And it's very promising against COVID-19. Now, the chloroquine that these people use... Yeah, so these are boomers that were sitting around watching the news, and they heard somebody say... Chloroquine. That, yeah, so they basically heard Trump say the word chloroquine. And they realized they had some chloroquine phosphate in their fish treatment from when they had a koi pond. Chloroquine phosphate and hydrochloroquine, whatever it is, they're not the same thing, as they quickly learned when they ingested the chloroquine phosphate. Yeah, these are the same people that are drinking bleach. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if they mixed it in with some bleach to just give them some extra protection against corona. But anyway... Uh, yeah, one's dead and the other one probably will be soon. Um, Darwin Award winners. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit sad, but really, you had to know better than to drink fish medicine. Yeah, if you're going to die, like, you, I'd rather it be these people. <laughs> <laughs> like, speaking of things you shouldn't do, New York City is going to begin releasing inmates in an effort to prevent the spread of coronavirus to incarcerated criminals. Mayor Bill de Blasio is quoted as saying, in the next 48 hours, we will identify any inmates who need to be brought out because of either their own health conditions, if they have any pre-existing conditions, etc., or because the charges were minor, and we think it's appropriate to bring them out in this context. Okay, wait. So, I mean, I know New York has been on this really bizarre quest to free all of its prisoners for, like, the better part of the, the year, but now they're using coronavirus as an excuse to just release everybody? Like, do you want to become a real-life Gotham City? Because <laughs> this is how you become a real-life Gotham City. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how many Batman movies have told us that this is a bad idea? They're criminals. They're in jail for a reason. Like, they should not be out in the general public, especially not with everybody cooped up in their homes. Like, limited supplies of toilet paper on shelves. Like, looting, robberies. Like, I can only imagine the scenarios that are going to come up as a result of this. Hey, you know what? 
New York, you go do you. <laughs> Just stay the hell away from us, okay? Um, but if you're worried about gangs of criminals roaming the streets looking to raid your home, fear not. Marvel has two new superheroes that they've debuted that might just come to your rescue. They've introduced non-binary character called Snowflake. Non-binary? Yes, the character is, for some reason, it's relevant non-binary. What, what the hell is non-binary? Uh, it means like you don't identify as like either one gender or the other. Okay, so they created like a like an LGB. LGBTQ plus, yeah, kind of thing. Uh, its name is Snowflake, <laughs> and it's in the new comic book New Warriors. Now, Snowflake also has a twin named Safe Space. Oh, of course it does. Now, the pair of psychic-powered twins are, quote, woke and hyper aware of modern culture now how that helps them fight crime i can't imagine but here we are in 2020 and this is a thing that these are like the worst x-men i've ever freaking heard of <laughs> well, I, actually i think one of them is an x-man oh because of the non-binary stop it. come thing. on that was so i feel like corny. this i feel like, are you sure this isn't a bit like it, this isn't one of our you know deals is it it's definitely being like widely criticized but it's really happening all right well marvel cinematic universe phase what is it phase five i don't know phase five they've got snowflake <laughs> snowflake, snowflake and and space space. to the rescue <laughs> <laughs> oh right. man looks like we're getting another call in on our call in line I was about, all right well let's one more call. Let's, One more call. I'm Let's sure this it. is going to be great. Awesome. All right. Hello, caller. Why don't you tell us your name and where you're calling from? It is I, the Steel City Enforcer. Uh, Steel City Enforcer. Interesting name. Yes, yes, I, I'm patrolling the streets of Pittsburgh now, keeping our city safe from the storm and the burden that walk the streets. Oh, okay. Are you, like, part of the police, or, uh... Oh, no, I'm... Oh. Hold on, sorry. I can't keep that voice up all the time. That's kind of the voice I use for the public. <laughs> anyway, I hope you don't mind. Um, anyway, um, I'm on patrol right now. Um, I'm cruising around South Pittsburgh um, in my foreign explorer. I'm, I'm not in the police. I'm, I'm kind of more of an um, independent uh, doing my part. Doing my part. Okay. Uh, uh, you almost sound kind of like maybe like a, a citizen vigilante type. Am I getting that? Yeah, you know, I, I don't really so much like the word. Uh, what I am is I'm a, I'm a, honestly, I'm an urban superhero. I'm a real superhero. Uh, so everything that you read in those comic books and you see on those, you know, those movies, you know, Batman, The Punisher, Daredevil. Wolverine, you know, they're all similar to what I do, except for I just keep it to Pittsburgh, and I keep my fellow citizens safe, uh, and that's what I'm doing right now, I, I was kind of driving around, you know, I always have the radio on, listen to talk radio, and I heard you guys talk, talking about superheroes, and I thought I could give you some, I guess, a unique perspective. Oh, okay, well, that's kind of cool. I mean, uh, it must be kind of dangerous doing what you're doing. Do you have no, any... No, it's not dangerous for me. You know, I, I've, been, I, I've been trained in three different martial arts, and I played football in high school. I stay in pretty good shape, you know, not just for my age either. I stay in, I stay in pretty good shape, um, and, and, you know, I'm suiting up pretty well, too. Uh, so my super suit, um, I, I got most of it, to be honest. I got most of it at the Army Navy store. Um, but I've got a bulletproof vest, I've got a lot of Kevlar, um, I've got a helmet, um, I've got a bitchin' visor, and it's like mirrored, you can't see my eyes, um, and, and everything, you know, from my cape to my, to my armor, to my helmet, everything is black and gold, black and gold, I represent, you know, because I'm the Steel City Enforcer. Gotcha. Okay. Well, um, tell me, I mean, what's the craziest thing you've run into while patrolling uh, the street? Well, you know, it's, so far I haven't seen anything too wild, but, you know, I, I expect it's coming. You know, with everything that's going on right now and the stay in place order in, in, in effect for the whole state, I mean, I heard what was happening over on the other side in Philadelphia, and, and I knew that somebody had to, to step in because the police aren't enough. Um, you know, over in Philly, they got 
you know, they're releasing criminals early, they got people looting, they got people burglarizing houses, they got people being assaulted, and the police aren't doing anything. So that's not going to happen in Pittsburgh. Um, if anybody tries it, when I'm on patrol, uh, you know, they're going to get a surprise. They're going to get, I, I don't carry a gun. I, do, I don't carry a gun, um, but I've got a baton, a uh, heavy baton. Um, I, I've got uh, I've got several cans of pepper spray on me, um, and, and of course, a pride and joy. Um, it's a police grade taser. Uh, I'm not talking about one of those little stun guns either. Uh, this thing actually fires a bolt into you, um, and it puts so much electricity through you, you shoot your pants. <laughs> Wow, okay, well, I guess uh, if you do run into any criminals on the streets, yeah. you'll oh, be... Oh, actually, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, actually, she's going to go on around. Hey, you! Take your six feet, motherfucker! Six feet! That's right. Stop inside! Okay. Get inside your domicile! Okay, I'm going to the city hates you! The city city enforcer! Oh, damn it, I forgot to do my voice on him. Steel city enforcer. Steel city. Anyway, he got inside, so... Oh my god. Um, so it sounds like you're just kind of enforcing the quarantine. Am I getting that? No, the quarantine. Yeah, I mean, it's not a quarantine so much as it's a, you know, a stay in place uh, order came, came straight from the governor and for good reason. I mean, this COVID 19 or whatever the fuck it's called, it's a, um, it's a, it's a really serious illness. I guess it, it infects a lot of people. A lot of people are going to die. So I'm just making sure I save lives. Uh, keep people off. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Hey, I'm Get in there. To walk my Get door. in the house. You in the creature. Hey, 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 what about, like, if people need to leave their house for necessary uh, reasons? That guy was like, out there walking a fucking dog. Can you believe that? I'm pretty sure that's allowed. Like, that's... No. The no, dog... you gotta stay in place. That dog could have the corona, um, it could have the virus. That's ridiculous. Hey. What if people need to go out for medicine or a doctor's appointment? Look, and I, I don't know if there's any better way I can say this uh, other than do not go outside. If you go outside, I'm going to put you right back inside. Uh, you know, because we got two choices in, in Pittsburgh. That's either you maintain six feet away from everybody, or I put you six feet underground. And I'm going to make that decision for you. Oh, my God. What? That's horrible. I mean, if you need medicine, if you need food, um, if you need supplies of any kind, um, there's, just, uh, there's apps for that. Um, so you can use ship. You oh. can use DoorDash. Stop it! That's ridiculous. There is no, there's no app for a pregnant woman who needs to see her doctor or a, a, per, a I don't know if you're person. familiar, but there's an app called Uber Eats. Stop it! She should consult Uber Eats. That's ridiculous. You're creating a police state-like environment. This is outrageous. You should be taken off the street. Look, I am the street. Hold on a second. Get, get it. Get the street, motherfucker. Assault happened live on the air. Who was that guy think he is? Batman? <laughs> Batman doesn't tase people for walking their dog. Seriously? Seriously. Oh my god. I I, I should we call somebody about this or uh yeah. I I don't want to be on the list. Look, we're just gonna kinda of pretend that we didn't hear this. Um I think we probably should get off the stream, though. So. Yeah, let's call it a day. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Remember to catch our show next week and hit subscribe if you never want to miss an episode. All right, everybody. Have a good week. Brother, you better get down on your knees and pay a thousand more